As a teacher, you want your teaching to be as effective as possible. You want to offer your students a good learning experience, and this experience has to help them acquire the knowledge and skills they will need for their future professional life. To reach such an outcome, it's important to think critically about the design of your education. But how do you do that? One way to think about the design of your education is with the model of constructive alignment. This model was created by John Biggs in 1996. The model forces us to think about the intended learning outcomes, or ILO, as the basis for the design. The model is based on the constructivist theory of learning, the idea that knowledge is constructed through the activities of the learner. Therefore, to help learners reach the intended learning outcomes, we need to design teaching and learning activities that are in line with the learning objectives. The model is also based on an instructional design principle, which states that to create valid assessments, the assessment should also be directly targeted at the learning objectives. When we combine these two connections with the knowledge that assessment steers the learning process, this third link creates a triangle. So, in summary, Constructive alignment consists of three elements, the learning objectives, the assessments, and the learning and teaching activities. For a sound and valid design, all three elements need to be aligned, and not simply in terms of covering the same topics, but also in the nature of activities that students engage in. Let's illustrate this with an example. Assume a learning objective where students need to be able to argue the merits and constraints of the theory of constructivist learning. The assessment of the course consists of an exam with questions asking students to recognise different theories of learning based on characteristics. In this situation, there is a clear mismatch, as the alignment between the learning objectives and the assessment is insufficient. Compared to the learning objectives, the assessment is too superficial. As a consequence, we do not have an accurate measurement of students' mastery of the intended skill. Alignment, therefore, means that your assessment needs to be in line with the right level of learning mentioned in the learning objective. In this pyramid, which is called Bloom's Taxonomy, you can see six cognitive levels, starting from remembering, going all the way up to creating. When designing learning objectives, Always make sure it is clear at which cognitive level students should be able to engage with a subject, so this can be matched in the assessment. In this pyramid, you can see that each level of learning contains active verbs. Using active verbs will make your learning objective more specific, which will help to make a strong alignment between the objectives and the assessments. The same principle applies for the alignment between the learning activities and the assessments. Think about it. What kind of teaching activities will help students to prepare them well for the assessments? Which activities allow them to practice the skills they need to master? When the assessment requires that students argue certain theories, then a discussion in class about these theories can be very helpful for their learning process. When students need only to be able to recognise different theories, you could do a multiple choice quiz in class and discuss the answers to prepare them for the multiple choice exam at the end of the course. Usually, there are multiple learning objectives for one course, focusing on different levels of cognition. This implies that you will probably need multiple types of activities, and possibly even multiple methods of assessment to ensure complete constructive alignment. So, what would be the ideal way to ensure constructive alignment in your course? First, Make sure your learning objectives clearly reflect at which cognitive level they are targeted. Then, think about the methods of assessment that would best fit these learning objectives. And last but not least, design teaching activities and practice assignments that are aligned with both the assessments and the learning objectives, thus completing the triangle.